Uh, greetings YouTube, this is uh, Captain Machine. I'm here for another mega review. Uh, this time it'll be a deliberately planned one, which uh, the Core Cthulhu one previously wasn't. And it will be another multi part like my convention video was, and I'll actually plan it into a multi part facet. So, as the title above says, we are doing Ravenloft as a campaign setting, not as a system, because the system, of course, is based on DD. If you didn't know that, that is fine. I'll basically am going to elaborate and discuss basically why I love it so much. And also go through the history of it throughout the entire set of videos, three or four, depending on how long it takes me to ramble through all the topics. Um, what I'm going to be talking about in this video is basically um, the origins of Ravenloft and where it eventually got to in the end. Now, Ravenloft is unfortunately out of print, although a lot of this stuff I'm going to be showing in front of you I did get after the fact, i.e. after an hour print, which means it's still available out there if you want to look for it or you want to pay for it. So, first of all, we have I6 Ravenloft. Oh, you can see that, yep. Yeah. Basically, this started, this is a adventure written by Tracy and Larry Hickman. No, Laura Hickman, sorry, not Larry. Tracy and Laura Hickman. And they are very prolific writers for D&D and other RPGs. And this is what they're most famous for, in my honest opinion. Uh, that and the subsequent editorial control, as it were, of the RPG line for Ravenloft. Now, the actual adventure was written primarily as an attempt to escape the mappable dungeon. When I say that, I mean that every basically dungeon that came up before this was very flat, very linear. And this changed all that. By having a multi tiered castle. There we go, I'll just give you a rough idea. Because this comes with two sets of maps, so it's that big. There we go. That's at least the excuse they gave straight away. Although, what it was also is also a departure from the regular model of uh, a dungeon adventure, which was you have an excuse to go to a dungeon, you go there, you deal with it, end of story. And this was actually a decent back plot to it. There was a lot to do outside of the actual castle Ravenloft, which is where the name comes from. And it was universally renowned as being very good. Um, Tracy and Laura are reputed to have said that for a period of time they played this every year without fail to see if they could get through it. Um, it was later reprinted and updated. Uh, called the House of Strahd, which I don't have with me. Uh, it's, in the, it's in my collection, but I didn't bring it with me um, because I don't feel that it's where we, what I need to be talking about today. But no, that's where it started with Ravenloft 1. I say Ravenloft 1 because it's one of the few modules that got a sequel, I-10. It's Ravenloft 2, the house on Griffin Hill, which takes the same characters, be them Strahd, the Vampire Lord, and it also had some new ones as well, like Azalean, the Lich Lord. And it also expanded upon the... It also basically introduced a new land called Mordent, and the town of Mordent Shire, which is where this adventure is set. And basically the idea being that Strahd and Azalean are stuck in Ravenloft. It's kind of associated at this point that the place where, or Bavaria, where Castle Ravenloft is, is... is mm not where it needs to be or not where it should be and as such um, they're trying to escape via something called the apparatus which is an extremely dangerous magical device and uh, again this follows a similar build up in the first one did again critically acclaimed although not as famous as the first one um, where basically the idea was that you had a lot to do outside of the main dungeon which was the house of Griffin Hill and also that was the other thing the dungeon was actually a house as opposed to a castle or um, an underground labyrinth, which is quite interesting. Although, by this point in AD&D development, um, the, the, the definition of what was a dungeon it would, was so lax that having a house dungeon wasn't considered too unusual. There were things like labyrinths of uh, hedge mazes, um, interlocking spatial portals, or even a crash intergalactic spaceship so there we go all right now a year after that came out 
they released the Ravenloft box set. Now this isn't the actual box set they released because that only had a very limited print run and they reprinted it the year, the same, the year after with this. And which is basically the Realm of Terror box set. I say box set, look at that. You don't get box sets anymore, it's a tragic shame I tell you. This, I actually have two copies of these. This, uh, purely because the material in it is worth preserving to the point where I want to have more than one version of it. Now this was the first, this this made, turned Ravenloft from a adventure into a campaign setting. Now it kept the title, which is a bit of a mystery one because the only thing in Ravenloft, called Ravenloft, is Castle Ravenloft, which is in Bavaria, which is controlled by Lord Strahd and everyone else in Ravenloft, if you want to give it that name, calls it the core or the land of the mist. Or, or various other names depending on where they are and what their religious beliefs are and things like that. Um, and this basically had a whole slew of things in it. It had a map, post map, which post maps were very good back then. And this post map is fantastic, although horribly out of scale in my honest opinion. Um, and I don't mean it was it was basically very short distances. I mean the whole thing uh, from one end to the other was about the size of Yorkshire, the entire core, according to this, and I, that rubbed me the wrong way in all opinions. I, I thought that at the very least it would be the size of a whole country, not just a county. And Yorkshire, if you don't you know, is, is not that spectacularly massive in England. Uh, it takes about less than a quarter of it, less than a quarter of England. Um, came with a post map, came with a lot of lovely um, family portraits with family trees with gaps missing so you could deliberately insert key characters or characters you made up into those. It also gave you a lot of details about the actual setting. Now unfortunately it was a horrible horrible mishmash. Uh, basically like a, a quilt that you sewed, sewed together and as such a lot of things didn't mesh well. Um, there were a couple of domains that were incredibly hostile and you made and you started to wonder why the things that lived there didn't move, as it were. Um, that got fixed, in my opinion, with the Grand Conjunction, which is a big event, which will be covered in one of the next videos. And they updated the campaign setting with this. I don't know if you can see that. There you go. The Domains of Dread. This was also AD and D, and this was basically uh, post Grand Conjunction. It, it, it was, this is a much better developed setting. It took a lot of the rules that were considered optional at the time and made them compulsory. Things like fear and horror, which were very unique at that time. Very good, lots of fun. Now, unfortunately, everyone thought Ravenloft were dead at that point because they indeed died. TSR went tits up and third edition came out. Thankfully, White Wolf got permission to carry on printing it. So they made this. There you go, look at that. This is actually the limited edition book. Um, the Ravenloft Player's Guide is pretty much the exact same thing. And this basically was the third edition of 3.5 version of the rules, which is fantastic. It was a very, very good campaign setting. Um, it built upon what made Domain of Dread good, which was it made it actually into a place where instead of visiting it, um, which again I'll talk about later. It was also a place where you could actually born and have a whole adventure crew and die in, you know, of old ages if if you were lucky enough. Now, that is basically the end of the story. The only exceptional point I want to make, and this is the only thing that's actually still in print, as far as the industry is concerned, is Expedition to Castle Ravenloft, which is one of the last ditch attempts by uh, Wizards of Coast to actually make a bit of money out of DD before the 4th edition came along because this, this came out after the 4th edition was um, mentioned it was going to come out so if you want to find out what all the horses is about you can pick this up right, see you later